When you lose someone or something that's valuable to you, pain comes into our heart. Am I making sense? I read a book, and I wish I could say I said it, but uh, it's not original. I read it, and this author was named Edgar Jackson. Some of you all read a lot. You might have heard of him. He made some some sayings that really to read to describe grief. Now listen to this and see can you relate to it. He said, grief is a young widow trying to raise her three children alone. That's grief. Grief is a man filled with so much confusion in his life that he lashes out at the nearest person. That's grief. He also said that grief is a mother walking daily to the nearby cemetery, standing quietly alone, crying. And after being there a while, get herself together and go on to work. That's grief. He also said about grief, Jackson said grief is a silent terror that comes when you start to speak or call someone who is no longer there. I can relate to that. I go to, during the early months of, of the loss of Theola, I would go to conventions, and I've had a habit over the years, Melton, when I see something exciting or something in that city, I would get my phone and call her. Look what I see. Just a little nothing, nothing that means nothing to anybody but us. And every now and then, I would call her. And Vanita, a few months, I did went to a convention, and I saw something, and I almost st stuck my hand to pick up my cell phone. That's what grief is about. When you're, when you're, when you're used to something, it's hard to really break it. Am I making any sense? Jackson went on to talk about grief. He said that grief is the emptiness that comes when you eat alone after eating with someone for almost 50 years. That's what grief is all about. And during the years of 2013, uh, the first part of my wife's uh, sickness, I found myself doing a lot of cooking. And I can cook. And Melton, I always had this about the old, I wanted to wait till she wake up. I would cook and separate it and put her aside and put it in the refrigerator. And uh, did you not know that uh, every now and then, the first two months, I would almost get my knife to separate because of the grieving moments that I overcome. He also said grief is, grief is teaching yourself to go to bed without saying good night to the one who left you. I had a habit, okay, I had a habit of when I sleep, I'm, I'm a bad sleeper, and I have a bad habit slaying my arm now, and I would always uh, be wake, the old would wake me up by telling me to move my heavy arms. But I found myself slinging my arm and nobody messing with me. That's grief. Am I making sense? My brother and sister, grief will come in our lives. And grief is, want me to let you know, no one is immune to grief. I don't care who you are, grief will knock on your door. I stood, as pastor in 48 years now, I've stood at the bedside many times, and I've held the hands of those who are breathing their last breath for their loved ones. 
I've prayed and stood right by the bed as they breathe their last breath and comfort those but none who lost a loved one. But one day I was on the other side of the bed. I had to take that road and it's a lot different. I won't let you know, although I'm your pastor, I'm being transparent, it's a lot different than praying for somebody and needed somebody to pray for you. It's not, it's painful. But for a child of God, I bring you hope. But we are not without hope. Paul said, do not grieve like those who have no hope. If you're a child of God, there ought to be something in your bones to let you know everything going to be all right if you just hold on. And I don't know, I'm aware that I'm not getting to some of you all. If you've been in this pain so long, you've built such a strong wall that only Jesus and his Holy Spirit can penetrate. But that's all right, I'm going to do my part. And I let the Holy Ghost do his part. Death hurts. When you lost a loved one, it hurts. Sadness come and sorrow come. But Jesus said, I will never forsake you. In your time of grief, I want you to know that God is standing by. 